Hello guys, we will analyze insertion sort algorithm and discuss its time complexity in this video. So the time taken by insertion sort would be dependent on the input because sorting thousand numbers takes more time than sorting three numbers. Moreover, it's gonna be dependent on how the input is sorted. That is, the sequence of elements 4, 3, 2, 1 would take more time to get sorted than the sequence of elements 1, 2, 3, 4. That is we discussed in the previous video. But the running time of the program grows with the size of input. So we describe the running time of the program as a function of its size of input. And the running time of the algorithm on a particular input is the number of primitive steps executed in that algorithm. We will discuss this. Now we are going to make some assumption. Assumption would be the constant amount of time is required to execute each line of the pseudocode in the algorithm. For example, ith line of the pseudocode would take C A time of execution. Now let's see the pseudocode and analyze the time complexity of insertion sort. As we said, each line would take constant amount of time. That is, the line first would take amount of time C1 to get executed. Similarly, line 2 would take C2 amount of time to get executed. Similarly, 7th line would take C7 amount of time to get executed. And we will just see how many number of times each line is being executed so that we would if we multiply the cost and the number of times each line being is being executed if you multiply them and sum them all up we will get the total time that is total number of steps taken by this algorithm this is what we have to determine so the line first would be executed n number of times why n number of times not n minus one number of times as j is being run from two to n but Whenever we have a for loop or a while loop, this line is being executed one more time than the loop body. Why? Because we have to meet a condition to make this for loop run. So it will go till n plus 1, then only it will determine that the condition for for loop is not being met and we have to get out of the for loop. So this line would be executed n number of times. This line would be executed n minus 1 number of times. This line would also be executed n minus one number of times. Now getting to this line, this line would depend upon the value of j. That is for j equals to two, how many number of times the while loop is being executed. Similarly for j equals to three, how many number of times the while loop is being executed. So we denote tj as the number of times the while loop is executed for a particular value of j. So this line would be executed as t2 for j equals to two, t3 for j equals to 3 so it would be sum of t2 plus t3 plus t plus tn so it would be summation j2 to n tj now it is inside the for loop as we said this line would be executed one less than the this line so it would be summation j2 to n tj minus 1 and this would be summation j2 to n 2 to n tj minus 1 now the line 7 is inside the for loop so it would be executed n minus 1 number of times. So the total time taken by these steps would be the cost of each line times the number of times each line being executed. For example line 1 takes c1 cost and it has been executed for n number of times. So the time taken by this line would be c1n. Similarly for line 2 it would be c2 n minus 1. So what we will do we will sum the time taken by each line to get the total time. So it would be C1n plus C2n minus 1 plus C3n minus 1 plus C4 summation tj plus C5 summation tj minus 1 plus C6 summation tj minus 1 plus C7n minus 1. So this will be the total time taken by these steps. Let's discuss the best case of this algorithm now. So the best case would occur when the array is already sorted. For example, in this case, array is already sorted. So what we will do is for each j, there would be one comparison in the while loop. Why? Let's see this. Let's see when j is equals to 2. So when j is equals to 2, i would be 1. And we will be comparing this condition if ai is greater than key or not. ai would never be greater than key 
because each element is in its correct position. For therefore, for each j there would be one comparison and this while loop would break. So tj would be one for each j. So putting tj as one in this, what we would get is summation two to n one, and this would be zero. This would also be zero. So summation two to n one would be one plus one plus one till n minus one number of times. So it would be n minus one. So the total time taken would be c one n plus c two n minus one plus c three n minus one plus c four n minus one plus c five zero plus c six zero plus c seven n minus one. So the total time would be a function of n. So in the best case, the running time of the algorithm is a linear function of n. Let's look at the worst case of insertion sort algorithm now. So the worst case of insertion sort algorithm would be when the array is reversely sorted. So let's say, for example, in this case, this array is reversely sorted. So in this case, we have to compare each element a j with each element in the entire sorted array that is a one through j minus one. Let's see how. So this is our reversely sorted array. We will see that for each j, the while loop would be executed j number of times. Let's see how. Now let's look at the pseudo code for insertion sort algorithm. So pseudo code for insertion sort algorithm was for each j, we would assign the variable key as a j, and we would compare if a i is greater than key or not. In this case, a i was greater than key. That is four is greater than three. So what we would do? We would move the elements. That is a i plus one. Would become a i and i would be decremented. Here i would be zero. Now this while loop would break because this condition is not being met now. So i would be zero. This would be our new array and a i plus would be becoming key in this case. So the number of times while loop executed was two number of times when j was two. Now let's look at when j is equals to three. So when j would be three. We would be assigning key as a j, that is two in this case. We would be comparing a i is greater than key or not. Yes, a i was greater than key. So what we will do? We will move the elements and decrement i. A i plus one would be becoming a i, and i would be becoming one. Now we will again compare if a i is greater than key or not. Yes, three is greater than two. So what we will do? We will move the elements. And we will decrement i, so i would be becoming zero in this case. Now the condition for while loop is not being met. So what we would do? We would come out of the while loop, and we would assign a i plus one as key. So a i plus one would be becoming two. So this is our resultant array from this. So in this case, when j was three, the while loop executed three number of times. So for each j. The number of times while loop would be executed would be j number of times. So in this case, t j would be j for each j. As we saw, t j comes out to be j when the array is reversely sorted. So putting t j as j in the total time taken by the insertion sort algorithm, what we would get as t n as this. Then we would t j as j in this. Now, while evaluating the value of summation j, we know that sum of one through n gives us n into n plus one by two. Now, this is the sum from two to n, so we have to subtract one from this. So we would get this as n into n plus one by two minus one. Similarly, summation two to n j minus one would be summation two to n j minus n minus one because one. Would be added n minus one number of times, so it would be n into n minus one by two. So the total time would be c one n plus c two n minus one plus c three n minus one plus c four. Putting the value of summation j, similarly putting the value of summation j minus one, we would get the total time this. Now collecting the like terms, we would get t n as the function of n square. So in the worst case. Time taken by insertion sort algorithm is a quadratic function of n, so t n is a function of n square. For analyzing the time complexity of algorithm, we are interested in knowing the worst case only, because the worst case gives us a upper bound on the running time. We can't go worse than this running time. So in this case, worst case came out to be a function of n square. So our insertion sort algorithm would take 
order of n square time it will grow as a function of n square so insertion sort algorithm would take order of n square time we can also see that average case is as bad as the worst case because in that case tj would be j by 2 and we would again land up as a function of n square so the insertion sort algorithm takes theta of n square time if you liked this video please like it share it and subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos on algorithms